Hello everybody, Jonathan Pulley here with West Coast Weather. Today is October 7th and we're looking at the satellite imagery of the East Pacific Ocean. Up here is Alaska, here's British Columbia, here's Oregon, Washington, California. And down here in the bottom right, you can see a her a tropical storm Lydia that will become a hurricane in the next couple of days and start affecting Mexico. That shouldn't do really anything to the West Coast, so we won't really worry about that. But you can see the marine stress and fog moving up the coast and cooling a lot of the coastal locations. And then we're going to take a look at the warm weekend that we're having for a lot of the West and then storm systems that are going to start coming into the area, bringing wetter and cooler conditions to a lot of the region. And then we'll also take a quick look at the forecast for the solar eclipse on October 14th and see if there's going to be prime viewing conditions or not. So without further ado, let's get right into the forecast. Now let's look at the big picture and here's Washington, Oregon, California, British Columbia, Alaska. This is showing the general ridge and trough positions. There's troughing starting to build over the Gulf of Alaska, which will allow some storm systems to form and bring rain and breezy conditions to parts of Washington, Oregon, and parts of Northern California as well. You can also see the large ridge that's causing some fog in the mornings over the valleys and also bring us above average temperatures and even some record temperatures for parts of Washington, and Oregon. 70s and 80s will be possible in the valleys and We'll just bring some very clear conditions today, later today and into tomorrow before systems start moving in on Monday. As we scroll out, we can see that happen. You can see the ridge starts shifting east over the interior mountain west and parts of Alberta and Saskatchewan. And then as we head into Tuesday night into Monday, you can see the troughing start really building over the Gulf of Alaska, fling a, a system in on Monday, kind of dies off. So it's going to be a weak front that moves through. And then a stronger low pressure system starts coming in towards the Vancouver Island area and Washington coast. Thankfully, that will start weakening as it comes in. So no strong winds are really expected with that, but some breezy conditions for some of the interior locations and especially the coastlines will occur. And then that dives in, bring continued showers and rain and breezy conditions to the parts of the coastal areas. And then as we head in the later next week, this is the Wednesday night into Thursday morning type aim. Some malls are showing the ridging building in again, but it's kind of too, the troughing is kind of too close for us to be fully out of the active weather. And with a deep trough like this, we're likely to get some more precipitation as well. But that's not the best because as you see up here, this is Friday the 13th, the day before the solar eclipse is supposed to occur. And you can see the troughing start is over much of the west. So there's likely going to be some clouds around during the solar eclipse. Hopefully the system will trend weaker and slower and will not move in during that time or it will be faster and get out of the area fast enough. But Currently, it's not looking the best for some places. This is also almost 180 hours out, so there's not that much confidence at this point. But models are starting to agree that there's going to be another system approaching the coast around this time frame. As we head a little farther out on the European model, you can see the ridging starts building the area, but that troughing is still right there. We may warm up a bit, but we're likely to still have precipitation coming into the area, maybe a couple of dry days. And that's as far as the European model goes out. So now let's look at the GFS model. Good agreement in the short term as there should be. First system moves through. Second deeper low moves into the Washington coast and into the Pacific Northwest. Ridging starts to build in a little further north on the GFS around a Friday, a Friday time frame. So there is still some differences to work out, which is to be expected this far out. But still, there's systems coming that, that systems right there on the coast the morning of the solar eclipse day. So we're just going to have to watch that closely and I'll update you guys again um, on next Friday, right before the solar eclipse. So we'll have the best data possible as we head out. The GFS builds another big ridge that would probably generate some foggy conditions in the mornings for some of the 
coastal areas and also warm temperatures. Mind you, this is still 10 plus days out, so we have plenty of time to still look at this. That ridging really hangs on. This can happen sometimes in October, where it's still not fully out of the woods yet for having warm and sunny days, which is pretty nice to have at least in between before we get really cloudy and rainy for a lot of places when we head into late October and November. So now let's look at the three hour precipitation rates and just see generally when the, the rain should arrive for places. You can see right now that the front's kind of well off the coast, working its way closer to the coast. By Sunday evening, the, the, the low pressure system that's associated with this front is going to be moving towards Haida Gwaii. And the front moves into the west coast, really a really straight line of, of rain, all the way from southern British Columbia, all the way down to the, almost to the Bay Area as well. So even down near the Bay Area, you may get a few showers as well. Not that heavy of rain expected with this, maybe a, a half an inch of rain in the mountains, maybe a little more, less for some of the interior locations. Then as you can see, not much of a break before our next system starts moving in Tuesday morning. And then you can see the low pressure right there. This may bring some heavier rains to the coast because it kind of lingers and weakens, so it takes a while to get out of the area. So some of the coastal areas may get some heightened rate and fall amounts with maybe over an inch possible for those locations. You can see some showers still possible during the entire day on Wednesday and maybe some convergent zone activity in the Puget Sound. As we head into Thursday, it dries out for a bit. As I said, there may be a couple of dry days, but then you can see right at the end of the European Mall run. Right on Friday, there's a system starting to approach the coast with cloud cover, which may obscure some of the solar eclipse viewing. And now let's look at some wind gusts we may expect with this system. And as we head into Sunday evening, you can see um, gusty winds starting to approach the coastal areas. Thankfully, if this low pressure system would have gone farther south, we would get probably stronger winds and such. But only really parts of southwest British Columbia on Vancouver Island, Haida Gwaii, some of the western coast up there will get some of the stronger winds. Some breezy conditions expected on the coast, maybe some gusts approaching 40 miles per hour, nothing crazy. You also see some gusts here winds up near Woodby Island, the San Juan's if you look close here right in western Washington. They tend to get elevated wind speeds over there beach because it's between the Olympic Mountains and the Cascades, which sometimes causes the Pressure gradient to be a little greater so they can get stronger winds in localized areas over there. And then the wind kind of dies out and you can see the system move over the mountains. And then you can see our next low pressure system bring another round of gusty winds to the coastal areas and parts of the interior northwest part of Washington, maybe some of the mountain locations. And it kind of just stays breezy most of Tuesday and the Wednesday before the system finally moves out of the area and weekends. And then you can see the front, the weak front, maybe in late next week, approaching the coast. Now let's look at some graphics from the National Weather Service. This is from Spokane. They're really great with their graphics. They're showing the pattern change with sunny and dry weather through Sunday. And then late Monday through Wednesday, return the cool, breezy conditions, widespread showers, highs cooling into the 50s and 60s by Tuesday. And this is all the way down from the National Weather Service of Los Angeles. Unseasonably hot temperatures, elevated fire conditions through today. And so high temperatures in the 80s, the low 100s. And mind you, this is October. Even though this is California, this is still pretty warm for this time of the year. And some breezy conditions will also cause some elevated fire conditions. So heads up if you're down there. And the heat risk will also spread all the way up in parts of Northern California in the Bay Area with widespread moderate heat risk and maybe some localized major heat risk. This just means that this level of heat affects most individuals sensitive to heat, especially those with that effective cooling and slash or adequate hydration to stay in a cool place during the heat of the day. So watch out if you're down there. Now let's look at the solar eclipse forecasts. So on October 14th, a solar eclipse will move out of the northwest all the way down through Texas and much of the west coast will be in the 80 the higher percent range so 
a good bit of the sun is going to be obscured. And right in this path of totality, people will get the viewing of what is called the ring of fire, where the moon covers about 90% of the sun. And it, le it, it leaves a ring of the sun right around the moon, which causes this ring of fire effect, which is really cool to watch. So now let's look at the cloud cover during that time. You can see a lot of the West Coast is pretty sucked in on Friday. But if you see, if as we head into Saturday morning, that front kind of goes gets out pretty quickly on the year, the new European model from this morning. And maybe some of the coastal areas may get out of the clouds fast enough. And it looks like Nevada may start clearing up, but there's still going to be some clouds around. So we're really just going to it's going to be up to the luck of the draw. And then now let's look at this is the European ensemble for the Whidbey Island Naval Air Station up in Washington. This just shows all the 58 individual ensemble members of the European Mall. Each of these are slightly tweaked at the beginning of the atmosphere. At the beginning of the forecast, and the atmosphere tweaked just a little bit. They get a variation in the forecast. So that we take all 50 of these and get an average of them, which is the ensemble, the ensemble mean. And that just gives us a better idea of what whether we may expect and we can look at each individual one for wind speeds and rain amounts and it's just a really cool visual to look at you can see breezy conditions expected monday tuesday and wednesday for Woodby island and you can see some splattering as you get off in the future the forecast is pretty chaotic because models aren't really sure and they're not they're not agreeing with each other so you'll just get the splattering which this turns into a lot of what we call the spaghetti plot, which some of you may see for hurricanes and such. And this is exactly what it is. It's a bunch of different models. And once you get far out in the forecast, it gets really chaotic. And that's why you get those little spaghetti noodles going everywhere on some of those forecasts for hurricanes and such. And then you can see there's some higher wind gusts up over 50 miles per hour. And we can look at these individual ones on this website. So I took it. Ensemble member 38, I believe, which showed a 57 mile per hour wind gust. And you can see why that is. Look at this huge storm system that one member showed. This would bring quite the winds to love at the coastal British Columbia. Out here on the coast, this model even shows some gusts over 110 miles per hour. That's, that would be crazy. This is just for fun to look at. This is just a fantasy forecast. There's no really any confidence in a scenario like this. It's mainly just for fun to look at and see what some of the crazy models are showing. And then we can look at the 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 10 day temperature outlook for SeaTac, and you can see the warm up temperature is almost approaching 80 degrees. Very nice for October. And then you can see the drop off as we head in the next week with temperatures, the high temperatures dropping into the 60s, maybe even not even getting the 60 on Tuesday. And if we Go. This is all the 50 individual ensemble members again, but this is for total rain amounts. So this is Tuesday of this is about Tuesday of this week, right in this column right here. So you can see our first couple systems give us maybe up to an inch for Seattle. And then you can see all the higher rain amounts as we go off into the 10 to 16 day range. The control run right here shows even up over five inches of rain for Seattle. That would be kind of crazy, but. That's really far out. There's no confidence in that. And here's Sacramento International Airport. You can see the very hot temperatures today with temperatures in the 90s, which if if you ask me, that's really, really warm, especially for a person that lives up in Washington. But you guys in California can withstand some hotter temperatures than this. But this is still pretty warm. And then you can see the also the cool downs for for parts of California as well. Still temperatures in the 70s and up into the 80s, but definitely cooler than 95 degrees. And here's also the expected rain amounts for Sacramento. And you, you can see some showers are possible, not as much down here, especially because this time of the year, they're still relatively dry down there. The control run only has around a tenth of an inch, so maybe just some scattered showers. And now we can look at the six to 10 day temperature outlook for the probability of above average temperatures is showing up for a lot of the West Coast. And this is for October 13th through 17th. So look, let's look at the same time frame for the precipitation outlook. You can see generally above average temperatures for right along the coast and the western slopes of the Cascades. 
and that's what the models are showing. And if we look over at the 8th, the 14 day temperature outlook, this is for October 15th through the 21st. Still above average temperatures, but if we go down and look at the precipitation, still above average temperatures for a lot of the West Coast. Maybe some dry, uh, drier um, than normal conditions for some parts of Central and Southern California. So there's a lot of weather action coming up, so we'll continue to watch out. Well, that's it for this video. I hope everybody enjoyed it and enjoys the rest of this um, warm and sunny weekend. Unless you're on the coast, then you may get, be getting some fog and such. If you wouldn't mind um, hitting that like button, subscribing to the channel, it just helps the algorithm get my video out and to help more people see it. And also hit that notification bell if you want to be notified of when I post my next video, which will likely be Friday of next week. And then we'll get the update out for the solar eclipse coming up and talk about what we may be expecting in the future weather wise. So. Anyways, take care, God bless, and have a wonderful weekend and next week.